external funders or skills for community, community organising and also basic things like information about what's happening with, within your local area so you can get involved were all things highlighted as ways to facilitate resident action. Um, it's important to note that I think particularly councillors recognise the role that the um, constituency officers have provided in unblocking um, issues or concerns from local residents and getting speedier resolutions. Um, community stakeholders suggested that there was probably um, a role for community builders, so connecting local groups um, better together. And finally, and, and I think I should point out that we took this um, piece of work that was conducted last summer, so um, at the time there was a, a kind of message coming back, particularly from our community I mean, insight, I'm sure you won't be surprised necessarily to hear that, but there was some apathy regarding the political system, and I think that suggested that there was some strain between the relationship between organisations and local people. Okay, so um, in terms of next steps, um, Obviously, we wanted to reflect what we'd heard back to all the committees um, and just to test that out. And so that's happening this month. Um, Councillor Patrick is proposing to take a report um, to Cabinet reflecting the findings from this work and his proposals for moving forward in the new municipal year. And um, we are obviously continuing to work with the Rural Partnership to look at how we deliver the Rural Plan with our communities and using some of this work and, and others to drive that forward. Okay, thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you. Is there any questions for Rachel? Pat? Yeah, just a couple. I mean, uh, um, that's, that's a great report, Rachel, but I have to say, um, uh, uh, I'm not being negative. You seem, to, you seem to be, I, I feel as if we've, we've been there before and we're going round and round with a lot of this. I have no uh, doubt the, uh, the, the reasoning behind the report uh, and the questions it poses. But I mean, for instance, I just, I just jotted down some previous organisations, for instance, the Widow Voluntary Community Sector Network that we used to have, um, going back even further, New Wallacey, um, Neighbourhood Renewal. Um, recently, we had them, um, I don't know whether they're still involved, and, uh, ABC. Never, they still involved, yeah, yeah. And a lot of these things <coughs> were talked about during that time, and uh, we don't seem to have got much further. In terms of uh, funding, because it's always come down to funding, uh, a lot of the community groups, and I declare an interest, I belong to a community centre, have been there uh, most of the adult life uh, and before. Um, mostly organisations just get by and try <coughs> very, very hard to keep going, uh, to deliver the services and support that they deliver to the community. And it goes notice, I have to say, it really does. I mean, there's, there's been help over the years from the council, no doubt, obviously, with the likes of the Munching Clubs, etc. But that, all that's gone now, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, but I, I, I do feel as if we are going round and round and round. And I, and I don't think, really, I mean, I hear about community builders, and, you know, and of course, asset transfer has helped, hasn't it? I mean, that's helped some, some community organisations get on their feet, to be fair, um, uh, over the years. But I think what's needed is not just an evaluation of what's going on, but also some hard cash. And, and you know, everybody's chasing the same cost, are we not, of cash, because uh, there's only a, a limited amount out there. Um, and it's, it takes an awful uh, a lot of time to put together an awful lot of applications to bring in minimum amounts of money to keep going. And again, with community centres which are established, and I say declared interest, which are established right across the country, you know, it, it, it'd be nice if there was something there for them, because they are in the heart of communities. They're established in the heart of communities. They've got a long track record in the heart of communities. And uh, I, just, I just feel, uh, as if, it, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but I am wrong, hold my hands up, but I just feel as if this is just cosmetic and tinkering around at the edges. Thanks, Pat. Jeanette? Thanks, Chair. I'll keep it brief. Um, <coughs> thanks, Rachel, for coming along and standing in for Matthew. Um, I've, been, I've worked with you previously in public health, and I know you do some fantastic work around community engagement. So I'd like to see this develop. I mean, it's really vital that we do 
developed strong with high well communities and I totally get that they're dis disengaged and dis disenchanted with the political system and I think we've seen the net results of that in terms of Brexit and, and sort of overseas with Trump. I think people are desperate but they just don't know how to connect at the moment with the politicians. So it's great. Could I could you make a suggestion that Councillor Patrick comes to us first when he comes to do his next round of updates? Be nice. Is that, could you pass that back to me? Thank you. Thank you. Public questions have then finished. I'm sorry, they won't be bringing the public in on this. I'm off. Sorry. So any other questions? No? Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. We're going to move on to uh, number seven, which is the Rural Residents Association's request. So, um, Councillor Lewis, I think we'll pass over to you for this. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, uh, the Rural Pedestrians Association has had a scheme where they're asking each the constituency committee to nominate a road or roads where there is a problem with people parking on the pavements. Uh, they've run a scheme in West Kirby for a while where the members of the Pedestrians Forum can leave us households in that road and monitor it to see if they have any effect on deterring people from parking on the pavements where it's causing problems for other road users. Uh, and at their meeting last week, they asked if the Constituency Committee for Wallace would consider making a nomination for the Absolute Caroline and passing that information on. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Um, I think, has, has anybody passed on any roads? Has anybody got any suggestions that they want to pass on to Caroline? Or should we just do that by email? Okay. So, so have we got any suggestions? Because Caroline says it's for, up for discussion now for us to choose a road. Tony? Yeah, Grove and the Road, Chair, and New Brighton. Grove and the Road, New Brighton. Grove and the Road, and New Brighton. And, and the bottom part of Grove and the Road is an area which, which has been flagged and has restricted access on it for pedestrian use, uh, which is actually used as a shortcut between two main roads. So there is an issue, particularly given the fact that it's on a it's on a route that a lot of children use on foot to get to New Brighton Primary School. So there is an issue around the road, road. But I'm happy to discuss it with Caroline if you'd like me to. Yeah. Okay. And well, is there any other suggestions? Big Lady Mum near to the junction with Five Acre Road, which is um, causing a lot of problems with the uh, traffic going into our uh, is there any other suggestions? Jeanette Baldwin in um, West Park on Baldwin. Yeah, there's a, a because it's just outside of the town centre, there's a lot of people that park there and go in or go yeah. into the town centre and spend a lot of time there. Okay, Anita. Thanks, Chair. Um, we do have a considerable issue in Gardenside um, where there's a school and a church in the Lisa Ward. Um, where there is a uh, pavement parking even though there are restrictions already in place um, and there is very little police enforcement of uh, the restrictions that are already in place so if there could be some support or help with that, that would be amazing. Okay, so we've got four roads now and we've got to choose one. So, um, have we got any suggestions, Ian? <coughs> So I think the Pedestrians Association would be grateful to receive all four as we work with and then let them decide what they can manage themselves. Thank you very much, that's a good suggestion. So if everybody's happy with that, we've got all four forward. Yeah. Does everybody agree to that? Yeah. Yes, agreed. Thank you very much. <coughs> Is there any other outstanding business? No, I would like to thank you all and thank you the, um, the audience as well for coming along to our meeting at Wallace. Thank you very much. See you next meeting. Thank you. Thank you.